Oh, hi. Hi, we're starting a little early. Please let me know if you cannot hear me at all or whatever. Uh, let's make sure that the audio is working. But hi. Hi, what's up? Welcome back to Attack the Pantry. I am Jen De La Vega. Uh, this stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook for yourself during, um, you know, the thing that's happening um, and well for the rest of your adult life. Um, say hello in the chat uh, to let me know that you're here. I want to know if the audio is good. Uh, and we also like to throw eggs in the chat. That's how we uh, show love around here. <laughs> um, last time on Attack the Pantry, we talked to my friend Eric Merzman about ice cream for a while. Especially, especially, especially how you order a scoop at a new ice cream shop you've never been to. It was super insightful. So you can watch all the past clips here on my channel if you click on videos. Or the entire archive is located at youtube.com slash J-E-N-N-D-L-V. Make sure to subscribe there. Um, let's talk some business. Um, so I'm a Twitch affiliate. Yay. That means that uh, I can earn money from Twitch, which is pretty nice. Um, you can use real money to get a subscription to my channel or other creators' channels or whatever. Or, or, or the semi-free way or the loophole is if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can gift a subscription to your favorite creators every month. So if you have one, click on that purple button uh, that says gift a sub and uh, connect your account and you'll get a little crown next to your name in the chat. It's very sweet and nice. Um, lots of really good links below. One way to help us out right now is to tell people that you are watching this show. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tweet it. Instagram it. Invite a friend. Because uh, the more the merrier. You know, you know, you know, you know. How are we doing? Are we good? We can hear me, right? I want to double check that you can hear me. Because uh, I'm paranoid sometimes about it not working. <laughs> but I'm starting earlier today because uh, I'll explain why. But first, we are going to... Uh, what? Well, let's see. I don't know. Order of operations. What do I want to do? Do I want to start something now because we have to wait for it? or continue the normal way and uh we'll get through it when we get to it i just have to go i just have to go at 5 30 that's all uh anyway uh i'm trying to do more of these cook along things hi joseph what's going on how are you how are you today <laughs> um i hope you're staying warm it is quite cold in my apartment right now <laughs> Hey, what's up? Rabbit House Games in the house. <laughs> Wait, is a rabbit house a hutch? Is that what you call it? Where you keep a rabbit? Is that, is that right? I don't know. <laughs> it's so weird. Twitch like, StreamYard is showing me that there's only one person in the in the chat, but clearly there's more than one person in the chat. That's kind of silly. Oh, you're doing well. It's only 50 there. I'm so jealous. It's currently 27 degrees in New York. Um, <laughs> my goodness. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen. There are some few things that people have sent in uh, for me to show off. Show and tell time on the show. Yeah, it's true. It's a hutch. Thank you. Thank you, Connor. <laughs> I knew there was a word for it. I knew. <laughs> Um, friends, if you'd like to be featured in this part of the show, um, next week, DM me your cooking photos or memes, cooking memes specifically, or, um, cooking moments in TV shows. I love showing off screenshots and like asking questions about like, what does that mean in world? Um, <laughs> but, uh, here are some things that our fellow viewers have sent in, uh, and we want to, we want to check it out. Okay. So I'm gonna, it's going to look real crazy for a second. Share my screen. Share screen. Oh, oh, it's going to look meta. I apologize. Okay, we're meta. Um, this came in <laughs> from Robert. Um, are you familiar with the cheese brand Tillamook? It's, it's from uh, Oregon. And they're trying to run this campaign of um, Valentine's Day mother loaf. It's $150 
chunk of cheese. It says here, prove your cheddar love by purchasing your own 40 pound block of cheddar, what we lovingly call the mother loaf. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it drops on uh, February 1st, like a shoe, it drops on February 1st. Um, every Tillamook cheddar you get in the store starts a journey as a 40 pound mother loaf. Uh, wow. <laughs> this is amazing. Look at this on this pedestal. Could you, could you, you yourself finish a mother loaf? I don't know if I could get through it before it went bad. Cause because semi-soft cheese has, you know, a shorter lifespan than, like, Parmesan cheese because it's still got a lot of uh, water content. That's kind of why it makes it so, like, texturally good and melty. Um, I would need to have a party to, like, finish this off. But um, thanks, Robert, for alerting me to the mother loaf. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, let's check out what people have sent in <laughs> this week. Um, Brian on Twitter sent me this. It's your favorite. Um, it's true. Eggs are my favorite, but this one is a bejeweled egg. And, um, this is funny. This, this particular photo, um, I was taken aback, not by the egg, but by the fork and the plate, because I have those. That is, that's crazy. I swear to you. Check this out. That's my spoon from my parents' house, it's the same pattern. Did y'all shop at Macy's at the same time or what? <laughs> that's that's insane. But um, thank you, Brian, for sending this in. <laughs> um, Eric, my last guest on Attack the Pantry said um, that he was putting cinnamon roll filling inside of his weekly brioche loaf. Um, and it looks like it exploded a little bit out of the cute pan, but I think the payoff is, uh, let's check it out. There's a cut side. Oh, cinnamon toast bro bro brioche. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was terrible. <laughs> that looks amazing, Eric. Oh my God. Wow. Eric will have to share the brioche recipe with us uh, at another time, but that is amazing it's little it's so large like this brioche is very large <laughs> oh my gosh and then also eric was saying um that his family does um like nights like you would have a taco night so this is pancit night uh pancit is like filipino noodles um rice noodle stir fry basically but you can do all sorts of toppings it looks like you have a mango salad here too oh that looks like a lot of fun Oh, why don't we do pancit night? Oh, that's so cute. And everybody can pick their own um, stir fry toppings to put inside. I love that idea. Very, very cool. Thank you for sending those in. Oh my gosh. Um, Shmas, okay, you, Shmash from the chat says, some friends and I did a cooking challenge where we had to use miso. I made miso zuke, which are vegetables, egg yolk, and cheese. Cheese. Ooh, pickled in miso. Uh, then you use the leftover marinade to make miso soup. Hell yeah, we love a sustainable recipe. <laughs> That's so cool. I like I like it when friends like issue challenges to each other. You know, you have your own little uh, cooking show. It's super fun. Looks like they turned out well. I really like doing a hard boiled egg and then. Uh, you know, putting it in a, um, a Ziploc with some miso and letting it sit for a whole nother day. And then you get, you know, your miso okay. So good. Miso tamago is the technical, the technical term. Uh, oh, I think we got a close up here too of the photo. Look at that. Looks like you did okra and some turnip. Ooh, those egg, those egg yolks look real good. Wow. Good job. I love that. I would love to issue a miso challenge to everyone else. I'd love to see what you all make with miso. <laughs> um, let's see. My food, or what's happening with me this week? 
Um, okay, so the reason why I started streaming, um, you know, 30 minutes earlier than usual is because I'm going to see a theater show tonight at Dixon Place. It's a dress rehearsal for a show called Specially Processed American Me. Um, it's a, uh, a show by Jamie Sunwoo that examines the relationship of of spam with Asian people and how, uh, you know, we've processed our identity through through this very familiar food. Um, and so they asked me as part of the, a part of a like chef artist collaboration to share a recipe with spam. And so uh, I developed this, which is spam mochi. <laughs> In fact, I have some here. Uh, I'll, when I stop sharing my screen, I'll, I'll, I'll get some and we can, we can have a snack later. Um, but here, uh, we what started as a guessing game of what's inside my mochi, it turned into a delicious departure from my usual spam treatment with egg and rice. Now it's become a snack as playful to make as it was to discover. Um, <laughs> yeah, super, super fun. Um, so the full recipe for that is on my Patreon. Um, so you can check that out. If you join there, the link is below the Twitch video here. Um, also on Twitter, um, Kyle Chick uh, uh, shared a lo-fi beats generator so you could like become the person, the, the girl in the lo-fi chill beats uh, playlist. <laughs> so that's like my, that's me. <laughs> me as lo-fi chill beats studying, um, studying girl. Um, and then my, the nonprofit that I work with, um, Death by Audio Arcade, it has an open call right now. Uh, if you or someone you know makes video games, indie games, uh, we have this cabinet housed at Wonderville, which is a bar in Bushwick. Um, it's called the Wonder Cab, and it's a four-player blank arcade cabinet. And so people who have um, four-player or, you know, two to four-player games, <laughs> excuse me, games, we can switch them out every three months. So we have submissions open until February 1st at midnight. So uh, tell your friends, we want to play your games, basically. Ah, sorry, I'm a little um, asthmatic because <laughs> the cold weather makes me like this. Let me find my little inhaler. Nerd moment. Excuse me, I have to uh, <laughs> do this. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So, so today, 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 we are going to uh, make some mushroom dashi. We're doing two things, two very, very easy things. We're going to make mushroom dashi, which is a vegan sort of stock or broth. Um, and then we're going to make some vegan mushroom bacon um, from the seconds. So seconds is when um, you have... Um, ingredients that you use during the cooking process, but they can still have like a second life, you know, seconds, call them seconds. Um, so here is the ingredient list. You can also head to my Instagram, instagram.com slash randwitches to get this on your phone and you can take a screenshot. Um, <laughs> so uh, we'll go over these uh, when I stop sharing my screen, but here's the ingredient list. And then we also have the tool list. Heat proof containers, small pot or kettle, fine mesh sieve, non-stick pan, paper towels. Awesome. Cool. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and catch up with you in the chat because I feel like I'm missing a lot of conversation. <laughs> I need to find a fix around this <laughs> stream yard situation. Um, <laughs> seriously. Okay. Yeah. Got to invest in a stockpile of lactate for that. Um, I'd only buy this if I want to deplete my <laughs> lactate collection as possible. That's funny. Um, hi. Hi, Chris. How's it going? Ooh, Toria, you've been making miso chocolate chip cookies recently? Oh, if you have a recipe for that, I'd love to see it. I really would love to see it. Cool. Yeah, spam mochi melts in your mouth. Well, you have firsthand experience with this. <laughs> I shoved a mochi in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I like to check the chat on my phone too, but my phone is doing something else right now. The reason why, reason why, let's introduce, <laughs> the reason why I can't use my phone is 
The other phone is cooking cam. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's go over the ingredients. You don't have to cook along with me right now, but maybe you can save this for later if you feel like, um, you know, doing doing this. Hey, Chris, Chris, thanks for subscribing for seven months in a row. You're so nice. You're so nice to me. You're so nice to me. Uh, how was your stream last night? Let me know. And Gwem, how was your stream today? Did you make something new? Please tell me. Um, okay, we're going to rotate cooking cam because I want to show you the ingredients. Hey, Schmas, we were just talking about your miso zuke. Can you tell us, like, you know, how did y'all decide on miso? <laughs> oh, Jen already spilled something. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh, my God, Jen, really. Okay. Good. I'm so glad your stream went well. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go over the ingredient list. And first up are these dried mushrooms. This is from a cute Japanese brand called Sugimoto uh, that I I really like, uh, you know, using their stuff. It's really cute. Really, really good mushrooms. It's like grown very naturally in the in the woods in Japan. And they're very like robust mushrooms and a lot of you know that i love mushrooms <laughs> oh okay that explains it shma says someone had miso in their fridge and they didn't know what to do with it so thus began cooking challenge i mean that's major that's pretty much how i live i live by um challenging myself to use up stuff in the fridge because i have constant uh, space problems. Anyway, uh, Sugimoto shiitake mushrooms. And when you, when we talk about um, sort of this pipeline style of cooking, um, this is like a new term that I'm trying to like coin, uh, pipeline cooking, where you you use an ingredient in one recipe and then you use like its seconds in another recipe. So there's, there's this clear pipeline of how food moves through a process. Um, <clears throat> So when I when I when I make like mushroom dashi and then intend to use the mushrooms again in a second dish, I want to go for um, bigger caps, bigger shiitake caps. I'll show you here. I'm gonna open it. Open. So you can see that they're like these are huge. These are like big. Um, I have some other shiitake mushrooms that are only like a quarter size, but um, you want really big meaty ones because a um, they have a lot of flavor to give off and B when they give off that flavor, it still has a bunch left. <laughs> so that's why I like to have the big ones. Ooh, perfect. Our next ingredient, the water is boiling. <laughs> I can hear it. Um, cool. So we got mushrooms. Oh, it's so fragrant. Oh my gosh. It's so fragrant. So good. Okay. Next ingredient, we've got kombu. And I know I say like a uh, four inch square, but because this particular kombu is tall, <laughs> I did four inches one way and then just a little bit longer, another inch um, to like make up for that surface area. But kombu is a dried seaweed. Um, this is the source of a lot of um, MSG or naturally occurring MSG. Um, and uh, basically what we're going to do is hydrate this. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but it has a bunch of white stuff on it. Do y'all know what that white stuff is? <laughs> the white stuff is salt. And um, you can actually use these not just for dashi and like pickles and things like that. You could actually cure fish on this. So if you get like a fresh piece of fish, you can lay it on here for like a day in the fridge um, and then flip it over until you have like a lightly cured sushi fish. Uh, use sushi grade fish only for that um but yeah it, it's a uh, lovely stuff kombu um okay i've got some vegetable oil that i've spilled <laughs> we've got some kosher salt okay we've got some brown sugar uh we've also got black pepper in my mortar and pestle. A oh, 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 oh. little bit of pink peppercorn mixed in there. Um, it doesn't hurt to have that residue. I'm going to just actually pound this right now. Oops. It's like flying all over the place. Oh, I forgot the one thing that I always do. 
I need to do. Let's get my hair out of here. Get that hair out of here. Oh, cool. Yeah, your miso cured eggs were unbelievable. I mean, I'm a huge fan of cured eggs in general. Um, I've been keeping a few eggs in the freezer because um, I know, Toria, my hair got like mad long. I know. <laughs> it's really long. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I like to keep some eggs in the freezer because... You can separate the yolks for curing easier that way. Plus they last longer if you don't have any room in the fridge, which is my constant problem. Okay, we're just gonna smoosh this black pepper. Oh gosh, I'm getting it all over the place. I'm just gonna have to vacuum later, that's all. Is this ASMR for you? There's really nothing to it. You really just put the egg in a in a container and then put it in the freezer. That's really all you do. And when it defrosts, the egg white actually stills like as if nothing happened. It's all oh, pepper making me see. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> no, I keep it in the shell. Um, but you want to put it in a small bowl or a container um, because the eggs expand in the freezer as they, as because there's water in the eggs, that water expands in the freezer. And so it's going to crack the shell a little bit. Um, so you want to put a little bowl uh, when you freeze eggs. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Toria says there's an episode of Food Wars where he makes a little deep fried frozen eggs and they say it makes extra delicious because it breaks down the proteins. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> oh, yeah, once you freeze them, you couldn't peel them. So you have to let them defrost a little bit. Um, they won't completely goop everywhere. So just let them defrost a little bit so that you can peel them and then you'll be able to deep fry them from there. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so we've made some pepper. Okay, where are we? What are we doing? Oh, let's just make the freaking dashi. Okay, here we go. Um, I've got a container. We're going to do this here. Cool, 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 cool. Um, we got my, we're going to do eight, eight of these large shiitake dried mushrooms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. We're going to put our big piece of kombu in there. I'm going to break it in half just so it stays submerged. But essentially, we're making, it's kind of like tea. This is, this stuff is like so versatile. Like I use it all the time um, for stuff. And I'll explain that in a second. But we're going to put in some boiling hot water. I apologize if this sets off anyone else's virtual assistant, but Alexa, set a timer for 25 minutes. <laughs> really sorry. Really sorry if I set a timer in your house. <laughs> All right. So a quart is four cups and um, this is a quart container. So it will just about go to that line there. Perfect. Great. So all this is going to do, we're going to, we're just going to steep it. I'm just going to make sure that these mushrooms um, stay down every now and then so that they um, get soft. So as, so there's a several things happening here. So the mushrooms are absorbing the water like sponges. And then they're also releasing a lot of their flavor into the water so we're getting a broth and we're getting like mushroom like hydrated mushrooms basically so it should take around 20 minutes we'll see where it is and then once this is done steeping we can take these mushrooms and we're gonna make mushroom bacon with them yeah yeah it already smells super savory it's only two ingredients it's literally just like two ingredients, and water. <laughs> um, so this is a vegan alternative. 
the you know um well-known dashi recipe or traditional dashi is uh bonito flakes a handful of bonito flakes and the same four inch piece of kombu um and a lot of the time you won't use um hot water because the cold water kind of just coaxes it coaxes it out you know um at a slow rate um you get like a, a clearer broth that way because if you rush it like this and you squeeze things it uh gets cloudy um but yeah if you wanted to make regular dashi you get a handful of bonito flakes um two quarts of water cold water um and then one sheet of this like kombu and leave it overnight at room temperature and then the next morning you can just um strain it and then you have broth um or a starter to a broth i would say that i wouldn't i wouldn't have dashi by itself so there are like tons of ways to use dashi um folks if you know how to use dashi please sound off in the comments i would love to share your ideas as well but um just some beginner things like so how do you use it miso soup so miso soup is literally dashi plus miso so dashi is like the base of a lot of japanese cooking <laughs> and so uh ramen is like um the, the base is dashi but then you would add like a deep pork bone broth or a deep chicken bone broth um, to make different kinds of ramen. So like chicken paitan is pounded chicken bones uh, in a broth and then mixed with dashi. Um, miso ramen, miso ramen broth and dashi. <laughs> um, we can also use dashi in dipping soba, which was the recipe we cooked along um, a couple weeks ago. Um, you can do Korean custard eggs. You can also use this as a base for gravy. Um, any kind of savory, uh, savory soup situation, you can use dashi. Like I, there, I can't think of anything really that clashes with mushrooms. Like maybe they might mushrooms might overpower. Um, but we're only using like the juice here. We're only using the broth. We're not using the actual mushroom. So it's not gonna be as potent. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, has anyone else used dashi in your cooking? I would love to hear this. Ooh, age dashi tofu. This is not a silly question. This is not a silly question, Toria. Silly question is age dashi tofu, tofu and dashi. Yes, age is tofu. <laughs> It is like a little redundant. It's like saying chai tea because chai is tea. <laughs> but yeah. Hey, hello, Tiger Uppercut. How are you doing? Um, this is mushroom dashi that we are steeping for the next 20 minutes. It's like a soup base. And then we're going to take these mushrooms. We're going to make mushroom bacon. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, Shma says a lot of Korean soups and stews use dashi ma, which is similar, but uses dried anchovies instead of bonito. Yeah. So if you have like an overstock of some kind of dried fish in your pantry, this is another way to use it up. Like make dashis. Um, yeah. Super good. Super good. Um, but we're doing a vegan version, which is mushroom based. Super cute. Um, I'm going to go get my uh, measuring spoons. Because measuring spoons. Okay, we're gonna put the mushroom dashi uh, aside because we're gonna make the little bit of um, the little spice mixture. Ah. Little spice mixture we're going to put on the mushroom bacon. Y'all. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we already took care of our eight dried mushrooms, our quart of boiling hot water, a sheet of kombu. Um, so we're going to do one teaspoon of brown sugar. So I have that here. Mm, oh, my brown sugar is a little too <laughs> little too hard. Oop. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need to put a piece of bread in here. Do you know that trick um, to keep your to keep your um, brown sugar from getting all uh, crusty, 
you put a piece of bread, like a piece of white bread inside of the, the container with the brown sugar. I need to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, I've crumbled it. There goes my brown sugar. What else? A quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. So we've got my little mill here. Quarter teaspoon. Quarter teaspoon. Whoop. Yep. Okay. Away. We like putting things away. Um, quarter teaspoon black pepper. Here we go. This is very, very easy. This is like shortcut bacon. Because, <laughs> you know, at the same time that we're making dashi, it's actually like partially cooking the mushrooms for us. So I don't have to fry them so long when we get to it. All right. Putting away things. Putting away things. Okay. Hey, Alexa, how much time is left? <laughs> yeah you're right okay so continuation from okay we're just gonna put your comment on the screen first mass um so you said about uh in korean soups they use dashima and then your continuation is you can use the spent fish and kombu as little side dishes after you add some soy sauce and sugar and fry it up a little yeah it be it becomes banchan isn't that great that's so wonderful. Um, in uh, Japanese cooking, you can actually use the kombu for pickling also. So um, uh, where is it? I have a book. I have a book. I have this great book by Karen Solomon called Asian Pickles. And um, there is a recipe for using that kombu in here. You can see I have a lot of post-its in, in this book. Let's see. Let's find it. Let's find it. Kombu. Uh, preserved seaweed. Uh, 185. Wait, 185? 185. 185. 185. No, okay. 22? Wait, page 22. I looked at the wrong thing. Page 22. Here we go. Preserved seaweed. Yeah. Um, technically, this is not sukemono, but sukudani, another family of Japanese preserved food. Usually seaweed or seafood that has been simmered in a generous amount of soy sauce and sweetener. Um, high salt and sugar content makes it for long lasting food. And when refrigerated, this will keep for a very, very long time. Enjoy it on top of rice or in a bento, either as is or topped with chili flakes. We love chili flakes around here. Um, yeah, cool. So this one, this recipe is called kombu no sukudani, and it's three ounces kombu, half a cup of soy sauce, six tablespoons mirin, six tablespoons brown sugar, quarter cup of rice, rice vinegar, and then juice of half a, half a lemon. Yeah, so it's like long simmered kombu. Yeah, yum, yum, yum. Uh, let's see. Oh, Shmas's sister also has a ceramic lid attachment you fill with water. It keeps brown sugar humid and soft. Oh my gosh, haven't seen that gadget. Cool, worth it if you're working with a lot of brown sugar. I actually don't keep a lot of brown sugar um, around the house unless it's like summertime because that's when I do a lot of like um, pulled pork and that's my secret. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, bread is cheaper though. <laughs> you're so right. Um, Toria says, I need a functional recipe for fuku jinzuke. I actually don't know what that is. Toria, can you explain to me what that is? I don't know everything. <laughs> I wish I did. I wish I did. Um, cool. But yeah, I highly recommend this book. I use it all the time. Asian pickles. <clears throat> so we've made our little, it's like very little sugar, sugar, salt mixture. Um, you can uh, add more spices to it, depending on how you like your bacon. So if you want like pepper, pepper bacon, like pepper mushroom bacon, or like coriander mushroom bacon, um, chili flake, you can do all sorts of things um, to enhance your, your, um, what's it called? Your mushroom bacon. Oh, cool. Okay. So it's Japanese curry pickles like they serve at Koko Ichibanya. I don't know where that is and I want to go to there. <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. 
oh, I really want to go across the pond. That'd be so fun. That'd be so, so cool. Hey, Alexa, how much time's left? Just giving me the silent treatment today. I don't understand. I can't check because, because my phone that's cooking cam <laughs> has, the, has the app on it. <laughs> whatever. It's fine. Um, I also have some oil that we're going to use to fry the mushrooms later that I spilled onto the cutting board. It's okay. It's fine. The oil, the board needs to be oiled anyway. <laughs> oh, wait, it's a Japanese curry chain where they serve curry and spice levels. They can get it with cheddar. <gasps> cool. We have, we have something like that. We have curry uh, here in New York. Um, yeah, there's several Japanese curry places. I forget the one in Koreatown that I really like. I forget what it's called. I'll have to find it out later. But yeah. Okay. So, uh, does anyone else have any suggestions on how to use dashi? Pretty much any, any savory application that calls for water, um, you can put in dashi because it's light enough that it's not going to take over the flavor of the thing, but it's going to add another level, level of depth. The, the, the depth, depth, what a word, depth. That's three consonants in a row. In a row. <laughs> um, so we're also going to make shiitake bacon. I like having it around for snacking, for topping things, putting on salad, having it in a sandwich, you know, uh, putting in an omelet. It's like a great little, um, you know, it's, it's a nice thing to have to like just fancy up whatever you're making. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, is this tilted? <laughs> cooking cam. You're not, you're not doing so well, cooking cam. You're just leaning. Okay. That's just my tripod. My tripod's a little, a little busted. Um, how is everybody? <laughs> I hope that you are well and good. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good. I know cooking cam got twisted. I know. Um, so for those of you who just joined, I am, I started streaming early today because I am going to see a show uh, all about spam later and Asian American identity. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I consider spam part of my identity as well. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to do while we wait. I was going to get a spam mochi. Here we go. We got the spam mochi. You've seen Dario pop some dashi and mirin an egg before scrambling it. Yeah, very light and tasty. You get yeah, it gets really fluffy. Yeah, cooking cam is just having a day. You're right. Yes. Um, cool. So I got I got one piece here. One piece of spam mochi. Okay. Put this you away this aside for now. Oops, I dropped my little kitchen toe. Okay. I'm going to do a cross section for you on the cooking cam here. Oh, my knife is covered in oil that I spilled. Good job, Jen. <laughs> you guys see how responsible I am in the kitchen. I just spill a thing of oil and it's getting everywhere. Okay. So here's my spam mochi. It's not as cute because it was sitting funny in the container, but we're going to cross section and show you the inside. Look at this. Look at that. Cute. Oh, you're so right. I do need a mochi emote. <gasps> I got to ask Drip to make a mochi emote. It's just so fun to say. Just say it out loud to yourself. Mochi emote. It's so cute. I'm all about it. Um, but this works like as a flavor comp. Oh, oh emoji. <laughs> I love that. Um, so mochi and spam work really well together because it's like a savory sweet situation. Plus a squishy, like um, squishy with like a salty dense like texture. It, it just works. Like I really like it. <laughs> Mm. Mm, 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 mm. 
Mm. So I have that recipe on my Patreon if you would like to check it out. And the link is below this video. Mm. He's going to ASMR. You can't really hear me um, bite it because it's so soft. <laughs> it's really good. Mm. Anyway, I developed this recipe um, in collaboration with um, Specially Processed American Me, which is the theater thing that I'm going to see later. I'm very excited because it's a dress rehearsal. I'm seeing it before opening night. My goodness. <laughs> really cool. I also think it's amazing that they asked me to collaborate with them because, you know, I think that food can exist in a lot of creative places and not just TV and Twitch and cookbooks and we can do theater stuff too. Like, we just got to find cool ways to incorporate it. I mean, I would love to collaborate with a lot of you mu musicians here in the chat. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. If somebody's releasing an EP or something uh, anytime soon, um, I would love to do a little zine of recipes to go with your your, your music. <laughs> Not speaking specifically to anyone in here, Gwem, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, no pressure. <laughs> Wash my knife a little bit. Okay, knife has been washed. Oh, I gotta get a paper towel because I <laughs> am spilling oil everywhere. I feel like every time I do a cooking stream, I spill something. <laughs> Yes, I would love to collab. It'd be so great. Make me so happy. Um, okay. Yeah, who remembers the last time we were making the uh, soba and I just straight up spilled the, uh, the sauce right in front of the camera? Like in front of the cooking cam. It was so sad. Okay. We're good. We're better. Just clean it. Just clean and clean it up a little bit. Great. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> Spill counter. I mean, we don't want to acknowledge that or encourage it. <laughs> How many days since last spill? <laughs> You're right. Spilling stuff is part of the process. I have too much of an ego. <laughs> You just saw me get real just now. I was like, no. <laughs> yes, you were right. You're right. You are correct. <laughs> it's reassuring to me when you're imperfect as I constantly knock and spill things. No, I constantly spill things. Yes. Don't cry over spilled milk. Anything else is spilled, however, is fair game. Thank you, James. <laughs> Thank you, James, for that. <laughs> You're so sweet, Tori. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how much time is left on this dang timer. I started it partway through the show, so it should be going off soon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's check on it. Let's check on the mushrooms. The container is still very hot. Be careful when you're handling it. I just want to check how, how spongy they are. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're steaming. Look at that. I just want to make sure that they are submerged and that they are going to be soft enough for us to slice. I see that I'm going to have to let these cool when I take them out of the water because they are still, they're so steamy. Steamy. I'm giving myself a mushroom facial. <laughs> It's the mushroom spa. How cool would that be? Mushroom themed spa. Oh my God. I'm full of ideas today. <laughs> uh, so. I'm trying to speed through this because I want I want to make the, the next thing. But you can see that the kombu is hydrating. 
it was much smaller than that. You know that I broke it into two pieces? This is the, this is half of it. And it's, it's like pretty large. They expand. Okay. Just gonna keep, keep the, I know, steamy. Steamy. <laughs> steamy. All right, we'll let these go for a couple more minutes, and then I will show you an example of mushroom bacon with a few of them. I might leave the, the rest in here to steep because they still got a lot of mushroom flavor to give. <laughs> got a lot to give, these mushrooms. They're so nice. Ah. What is everybody else up to this evening? What are you going to have for dinner? Please tell me what you're going to have for dinner. I'd love to hear it. What? Wait, what? The lad who runs a chiptune net label, Pterodactyl Records, has his own mushroom brand, Seven Mushrooms. <gasps> I'm going to check this out. Oh, I spilled the oil again. Did you see that? This. <laughs> I'm hopeless. <laughs> Keep spilling the oil. My goodness, Jen. Um, that's dope. Oh, my God. That's so cool. I love that. Um, okay. Joseph is having a bean, cheese, and rice taco for a late lunch, early dinner. I know it's like only five. It's like a uh, early bird special right now. But for my friends in the UK, it's been past dinner time for them. <laughs> uh, okay, so Gwen has had crumpets and avocado for dinner with Marmite brew to drink. I haven't had this Marmite brew. I will look into this. Mm. Yeah, I had Marmite the other day. It was delicious. Um, excuse me, what? And you haven't set us up with mushrooms? <laughs> yeah, it's not me. It's the oil dish. The oil, this little yellow oil dish is drunk. That That's what it is. The oil dish is drunk. Uh, yes. <laughs> Ooh, okay, James. For my lunch, leftover curry chickpeas. For tea, leftover fake chicken and spaghetti stuck in the house. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah, I mean, same. <laughs> same, same, same. Oh, Gwen, you have a video um, from Marmite Brew. I see, I see. Um, folks, if you don't know, Gwem has a YouTube channel of music and cooking, which is very cool. Um, awesome. I will check that out because I have a ton of, I still have half the jar of the Marmite left. <laughs> Thanks for sending it. You wish you could grow mushrooms. I think that's the coolest. Yeah. Here in the U.S. we have, um, a lot of domestic, uh, services now that can ship the mycelium blocks to us and all you have to do is is spritz them every day and then you can grow mushrooms which is really cool um but i don't know how uh what what is legal or not legal as far as uh you know just farming mushrooms in your own home <laughs> where you are in the uk yeah 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 all right um in oh there there goes to alexa stop all right, we're going to pull, we're going to pull a few of the mushrooms out. I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave some in here just because I want the broth to be like super flavorful. But essentially from here, you would let this whole thing cool uh, at room temperature until, uh, you know, it wasn't hot, hot, hot anymore. And then you put a cover on this, um, put it in the fridge and you can use it over the week. Mm, you know, scramble it into your eggs, use it as a base for your instant ramen instead of just water. Um, any pretty, any savory application, even boiling your boiling potatoes in dashi will change them in, in numerous ways. Um, so yeah, uh, this is considered done, but let's see, let's, let's find, okay, here, that one's really good. Okay. These are hot. So I'm going to put them on the cutting board. To cool off a second. My gosh. These are like so meaty. Wow. I can feel it. These are very, very sumptuous. Sumptuous mushrooms. Okay, that one's still a little hard. Yeah, we'll use this one. Whoopsie! No! <laughs> 
<laughs> Whoa, if I had dropped this entire Dashi court container, I would have like cried. I think I would have cried. Oh, I see some some tips here. Uh, you need boiling water and Marmite only, but it's super complex recipe. I think you can handle it though, Jen. Thanks, Gleb. <laughs> here, actually, folks, um, while we wait for these mushrooms to cool, why don't we uh, hear more about Gwem's, uh, Gwem's Twitch channel? Because why not, folks? Check it out. Hi, I'm Gwem, and this is Attack the Pantry with your host, Jen De La Vega, aka Randwiches. If you're interested in electronic music production, chip tune, techno, that sort of thing, then by all means check out my channel, which is Gwem, GW3M. Until then, on with the show. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Thanks, Gwem, for making that video. <laughs> I love playing that video. <laughs> there are some people in this chat that I've asked to make a video also that have not sent me one. <laughs> yeah, look at that production value. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Seriously, don't you feel so special that, <laughs> that Gwen is talking to you? <laughs> I'm not yelling. I didn't, I didn't say I was yelling at you, my darling. <laughs> You can just play a bunch of um, your sound effects on your channel and then just like put your URL. <laughs> I don't hate your face. I don't hate your face. I think that should be some encouragement. I don't hate your face. Yeah, action, all farts. <laughs> Please don't. Not, not all farts. Add the Taco Bell bell, at least. I want the Taco Bell. <laughs> Speaking of Taco Bell, did you know that they are bringing back the Mexican pizza? <laughs> I cannot wait. I will go eat it. Okay, so we've got my um, shiitake mushrooms that have um, been hydrated. Um, so the water that we use to hydrate these is in the mushroom dashi. Again, we will look at it. Look at how like deeply um, colored it is now. It's like straight up straight up broth and I literally just it steeped it like tea okay so we're gonna take these mushrooms and we're gonna squeeze them out a little bit more back into the broth uh just because I don't want to have a wet cutting board so we're gonna squeeze they're like sponges sponges okay okay now for the bacon for the bacon we're going to turn on my stove to medium heat, okay? Um, and then we're going to cut off these hard stems. I'm going to put the stems back into the dashi broth just because they can still um, give off some, some brothy flavor. But I'm going to cut them off. We don't need them for the bacon. I call these the dirty feet because this is like where they attach to the substrate or like the log. Okay, so we're going to cut off the stem. I'm going to put those back in the dashi. Okay. And then we're just gonna slice these thinly. Can you see what I'm doing? Well, maybe if I go this way. Yes, yes. Um, I'm gonna go quarter of an inch. There we go. Generous. We don't wanna go too thin because they'll become like mushroom chips. We want mushroom bacon. We want something toothsome. We wanna be able to bite into it. Cute. Oh, yeah, these are hydrated all the way through. You can see. <laughs> okay. We're just going to slice. You can see that I'm keeping my fingertips curled and away. We never put fingertips there against the knife. Away. We use your knuckles to, or not, these are not knuckles. But what are they called? Tarsals, metatarsals. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> so use those to keep your fingies safe. Meep. And then you see how I'm holding the knife? Always hold like this. Don't go like that. Oh, I'm not doing it right. Okay, so this is how I hold the knife. 
Do not put your finger out like that. You get more leverage if you're doing this. Okay. Cute. Great. My goodness. Look at that. We've got some shiitake mushroom. Flanges. <laughs> Knuckles, yes. <laughs> cool. We're going to switch the cooking cam. Swivel with me, my darlings. Swivel. Okay. Got our pan. Pan is on middle, middle phalanx. Thank you. Um, pan is on medium heat. This is a non-stick. We're going to put oil in there. And I'm going to put a little bit more oil because I've spilled so much of it. All right. So I would say this is like a tablespoon and a half. Um, neutral oil. I did put some olive oil just now, but that's because it was in front of me. But uh, I recommend, you know, an oil that will not immediately burn off because olive oil has such a like low smoke, uh, hot and low smoke point that um, you run out of oil to fry with pretty much. Um, so neutral oils means uh, vegetable oil, canola oil, high heat oils, peanut, um, things that you can fry with. So I have a half, half vegetable, half olive in there um, for some flavor and convenience because it was right there. And we're going to add, so we've got, we're going to swirl the oil, swirl, swirl, swirl. Um, and it's important to use a nonstick pan for this um, because we're working with sugar. You really don't want that sugar to get on your cast iron or, um, or uh, enamel pans. So nonstick is really great for, for doing this specific recipe. Okay. So we're gonna let that heat up, medium, medium heat. Um, bone meeting parts, yeah, I like I like all this vocabulary. Uh, I'll use it in my next cookbook. Be like, yes, the, the curl away, so then you'll touch your bone meeting parts to the knife. Um, good question. How fast can I chop? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should have a stream of just like chopping stuff. Well, which will happen soon, actually, because I, I started working on a cookbook today. Um, I'm only doing the uh, pantry chapter this week. So when I get to like a vegetable chapter, like a, a salad chapter, maybe I'll stream uh, how fast can I like cut all these vegetables. Um, that would be super fun. Um, James, wanted, James wants to see some 300 BPM hyper chop. <laughs> New genre of music, hyper chop. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how fast I can chop. I actually take my time with it um, because I've actually like my wrists, you know, I've, I've been cooking for over a decade. So like my wrists kind of hurt um, when I, yeah. Yeah, Joseph makes music too. Yeah, Joseph, you should... Hey, I, I smell a collaboration happening here. I smell a collaboration. <laughs> Hyper Chop, let's go. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> Can we debut it on this channel? <laughs> Your Hyper Chop source. <laughs> Hyper Chop is breakcore, but solely using samples from cookery shows or Parappa the Rapper. Oh! I'm so into it. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the birth of Hyperchop. Can you imagine all of us in a documentary like, yeah, it was a cooking show. I was literally just in the Twitch chat and um, basically she's a genius. <laughs> yeah, you saw it here first. Um, Muse to the stars. <laughs> Jen De La Vega. <laughs> <laughs> the inflection point of hyperchop music. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I can't wait to hear it. And if it ends up being just breakcore in general, fucking bring it on. <laughs> okay, let's see how hot the pan is. We're going to lightly flick some water at it. I saw it sizzle, but I didn't hear it. So I don't think it's quite hot enough yet. 
I do not recommend doing that water flicking test on deep frying because then it will just pop back at you. But if it's just a shallow fry like this, it's not going to hurt you. Oh, nope, see, I didn't. <laughs> we didn't hear any sizzling yet. So once we hear some sizzling when I um, flick some water there, uh, I will put the mushrooms in. I need to make sure that the oil is coating the bottom of it. <laughs> you go get burnt. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Got to be careful when working with oil, my friends, my friends. Um, I cannot wait for the hyper chop zeit, guys. Let me tell you. <laughs> God, what do hyper chop fans look like? Are they obnoxious? I can't wait. I want to see it all. <laughs> the birth and death of hyper chop in one hour. <laughs> We've ruined it already. <laughs> yeah, they only wear chef whites. Or or um, they only got like knuckle tattoos that say like food words. Like I would have egg yolk. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Every Hyper Chop fan talks like Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, egg yolk with an extra G. <laughs> Or eggy, eggy yolk. <laughs> My tiny knuckles. I don't even think you can see words of it. <laughs> okay. Hey, come on. Hurry up. We want to get going. How about if I put a mushroom in the middle? Nope. <laughs> oh, I heard the tiny sizzle, but it's too tiny. Eggs yolk. Every artist photo is them outside the back of a restaurant side alley smoking a cigarette. I mean, what's the fucking difference between <laughs> that and a lot of band photos? Like, seriously, though. Seriously, though. That's so funny. I love this. I'm all I'm all in for for <laughs> hyper chop. What is the dance? What do you think it, uh, the dance floor looks like? Do you think people are like doing this? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen it at um, a trade show or like a grocery store, but there are people who do demos of like the best peeler you'll ever buy. And they just start like peeling a bunch of vegetables <laughs> or it's just like people cranking um, uh, spiralizers or like making zoodles, <laughs> making vegetable noodles, <laughs> just like crank, 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 crank. I if we could invent a new music genre every episode of this show, I'd be so happy. Cause it's also like a like a like a challenge to like make that music. <laughs> oh my god. Um, is anyone in the chat doing weekly beats? Cause I know I know that Sylvester is, but I don't know. Ooh, ooh, it also heavily features a slap chop as the baseline. I love that. Yeah. That's pretty good. Slap chop. I actually never I never played with one before. It's like one of those unitaskers, you know. <laughs> I have enough kitchen equipment. I don't need a slap chop. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. I heard it. Yeah, we hear some sizzle. Yeah, all right. We're going to put our mushrooms in. Your stove, probably, if you have open flame stove, um, your stove will not take as long as, as mine. <laughs> I have a terrible electric. Um, okay, so we're going to put our mushrooms in, and we're going to make sure that they're laying on a side, because this is crucial for what I'm going to do next. So basically, we're going to fry one side so uh, yeah normally you would roast um mushroom bacon in the oven but i found this to be faster and a little bit more controlled because i'm a little bit of a freak when it comes to uh specificity and cooking uh, <laughs> uh but what i'm gonna do is we're gonna fry one side of the mushrooms and once it's brown we're going to flip them 
and then we're going to put this sugar coating on the other side so that it melts because we don't want to burn the sugar. We want to cook one side and then uh, one side will be glazed in the sugar. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Slop shop is totally unnecessary. Totally. But I'm so curious about it. Um, Joseph says, I thought about it. Maybe it might be a good goal for spring for me. Yeah. Let's make some hyper chop. <laughs> Should I just record a bunch of samples of me going, oh, yeah. <laughs> hyper, chop, hyper. <laughs> all about it. I'm so all about it. You see, this is how truly multidisciplinary my friends are. Like, there are a ton of musicians in the chat right now. <laughs> and I feel like all of you are capable of making a hyper chop song. <laughs> oh my god, hyper chop compo, let's go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. You see, they're sizzling. They're sizzling. Cool. Do I ever record my VODs or leave them up for a while because sampling? So I put them on YouTube. So um, you can have access to those. But if you want me to like pull the audio track, uh, <laughs> I also have like GarageBand and all that. So I can record nice things <laughs> if you need me to. I will. I'll do it. <laughs> Hyper chat. Hmm. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, um, the Twitch versions of all the videos are up for 60 days. But if you, I don't know, want to go to my YouTube archive, you can like just pull stuff from there if you can. But I don't know the logistics of it. Yeah, Hyper Chop Sample Pack. <gasps> we, I should. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. What do we want in a Hyper Chop Sample Pack? <laughs> of me saying things because I will do it I had to do pickups for the podcast today so I was like in my closet being like ah, fine <laughs> eggs eggs just me saying eggs in different ways eggs <laughs> eggs 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 <laughs> Ooh, the sound of aggressive whisking. That is a beautiful sound. Eggs. <laughs> I'm all about it. I'm all about it. All right, we're going to check the mushrooms to see if they've browned yet. Oh, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. I'm going to let these go a little bit. Because these are so just freshly hydrated, so they're very plump. They've got a lot of water. Okay. So we'll flip them in a second. Oh, the drunk yellow dish spilling itself. See, the thing is, it didn't sound like anything. It just happens. <laughs> it just it just goes yeah. silently. Silent my silent mistakes. <sighs> okay, I think we're going to flip these individually. Uh, I know this sounds tedious, but if you have tongs or tweezers, this will go quickly. Ooh, a bread knife cutting a baguette. I have to buy a baguette first for that. My goodness. All right, so I'm going to meticulously flip here. Then we're gonna arrange them in rows so that I can don't waste any of the any of the seasoning. Okay, and we're also gonna lower the heat down to low, 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 low. Yeah. Okay. We're knolling. We're knolling the mushrooms. <laughs> 
Okie doke, okie doke, okie doke. Oh, that one's already bacony. Those have to cook for much longer. Okay, so I'm lowering the heat because we want to melt the sugar topping on this. So, so this would kind of be the same method if you were doing it in the oven. It's just like, you know, I'm doing it over flame. Cool. So we got one side. It's brown. Almost done. Almost done. Almost done. Okay. So you see that? Cool. And then we're going to take my little, like, you know, teaspoon or so of salt sugar. And we're going to sprinkle it on top. And then these will make it bacony. We don't have the smokiness, but if you add a smoked salt or um, we could do like liquid, liquid smoke. I don't really feel like doing that right now, but um, you could toss that before you, uh, you saute them. So this mixture was meant for all of the mushrooms and I've only cut three. So I'm not going to use all of this, all of this stuff but I have enough to make more tomorrow. Okay, so we're gonna let that saute. We'll bring the heat back up to like medium, recenter it on the heat here, get some oil in the mix here. Tilt, 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 there you go. You can see it sizzling. See it sizzling. Yeah, worse problems to have than buying a baguette. You true, you true, yeah, you right. It's important to organize the mushroom bricks before constructing the set, yes. Aw, Jen's little mushroom house made of mushroom bricks. Listen, it's like Hansel and Gretel, but uh, I'm the nice witch that lives in the mushroom house and I want you to eat everything because these mushrooms don't stop growing. <laughs> oh, mushroom brick. House, yes, all about it. My tasty, let the mom be out. She's a mushroom. Right? House. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. See, I told you we have lots of good collabos happening in the chat. I love it. We love this. We love. <laughs> so good. So good. Great. So these are going to be finished real quick, actually. Don't be like me. Don't just touch mushrooms that are in the frying pan. <laughs> I just, you know, I can't really feel the tips of my fingers anymore. So that's why I do that. <laughs> but look at them. They're like nice and brown and they're getting crisp. So I'm going to go get some paper towels so that we can strain them. Cool. So I've got a paper towel. I'm going to put it on my cutting board um, so that we can drain the oil from the mushroom bacon. So this would take, um, this doesn't taste, take very long. It won't take this whole hour that I've been streaming. I've just, you know, been doing this very slowly. But you can see that it's very little ingredients. Um, super easy steps. I didn't really do much here. I cut some mushrooms and then sprinkled some stuff on it. Um, so I'd love to see if y'all make mushroom bake bacon in the future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's check. Check the BBs in the middle. Oh, yeah. BBs in the middle are done. So we want the mushrooms to dry out um, and get crisp, but not burnt. So you achieve that by having a lower heat and evaporating it in the oil. And you can see that they get brown. And then they'll they'll crisp up as they cool as well. Hi, Alex. <laughs> um, we are making mushroom bacon. We made some mushroom dashi stock earlier. Um, and now we're making mushroom bacon. Mushroom bacon. And we're almost done. All right, almost. My little mushroom bricks. Now I wanna, now I wanna hear that song. Na, na, na. 
Okay, so we're looking for this kind of brown. Looking for this this brown. Oop, did I drop it? No, I didn't drop it. Thank goodness. Okay. But when you when you pick it up and drop it in the pan, you should hear hear that it has like a like edges. It has like a solid tap. Like because mushrooms don't have like a tap. It has a, a squish. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to toss these a little bit more in the center of the pan so that we can get some even cooking. I can hear the sizzles. We're sizzling. We're getting all the moisture out. I'm going to pick out all these smaller pieces that have done that are done cooking already, but the rest of these big pieces still a little feel a little squishy. But you know, you if you've had bacon, you know what we're looking for. Bacon-like texture, <laughs> which is crisp. Hi, Leah. You don't like mushrooms. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> cool. So the thing about these is that it's it's kind of okay to undercook them because that's sautéed mushrooms. But it's not okay to overcook them because it'll be carbonized. So just be careful and pay attention to the brown the brownness, the shades of brown. And if it starts smelling burnt, you know, uh, take them off the heat. <laughs> yeah, I think that's some general good advice. Like if something is burning in the pan, remove the pan from the heat and then try to remove the food as quickly as possible, if you can. But um, I know that sometimes your utensils are far away from the pan for some reason or whatever, but it's just like, you can struggle to take all this stuff out of the pan, but the pan is still gonna be screaming hot. So uh, try to move the pan off of heat if something is burning. Um, okay, we're gonna turn this off. Yeah, I hear it, these sound great. The sugar has hardened, caramelized, got mushroom bacon now. Okay, follow me my darlings. Okay, we're gonna put it on my paper towel to drain. And that's it. Like that's, those are two dishes, two really easy base dishes. We made mushroom dashi stock and mushroom bacon. Check it out. I'm gonna let these drain a little bit before I eat them because they're also still hot, but hooray, look at these BBs. Uh, okay, Leah says they mushrooms hide in the forest. They must have reasons. <laughs> I mean, it took me a while to come around on mushrooms myself. I did not like them at, at first, but I found ways to enjoy them. Mushroom bacon is one of them. <laughs> um, I've been watching through the magicians, and yes, I'm suspicious of mushrooms. Oh, I love the magicians. Oh my gosh. I wish it, it didn't end. <laughs> they can kill you one year after you ate them. Ah. Living people eat dead mushrooms. Living mushrooms eat dead people. That's true. Um, actually, this is relevant to a podcast that I'm going to be on in April, I believe. Um, there is a podcast called Kill Every Monster. And I actually um, did a one shot and talked about for over an hour about myconids and mycology and mushrooms. So uh, you can look forward to that. Uh, in a couple months. It's very, it's going to be really fun. Um, I got to be a giant mushroom. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, mushrooms are quite scary. Yeah. Mushroom mukbang for sure. Yes. Thank you for saying so. Um, but yeah, these are the mushroom bacon and let's get, let me get close to the microphone for this. Let me see. Mmm. You see? Crunchy like bacon. Look at these. Let me give you a little close-up on cooking cam. Mmm, yeah. We got some crunch. Yeah. We did it. Uh-oh. Some of the sugar is sticking to the paper towel. Okay. One more. Mmm. 
Mm, that brown sugar really. Mm, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> if you want the full recipe um, and uh, ingredient lists, you can either check my Instagram. Hopefully, that story has not expired yet. Or you can subscribe to my Patreon. Uh, I post recipes every Wednesday. Today's recipe was the Spam Mochi. Um, <laughs> so you can check that out. Um, but friends, uh, I have to start taking off. I'm going to go see the Spam show, which is very exciting. Um, and guess what? Uh, surprise stream this weekend. <laughs> We're going to turn off cooking cam. Um, surprise stream this weekend. Uh, I welcome Ben Ratner, my piano playing friend um, from my old show, Chef Shock, is going to be joining me this Sunday at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. So um, we're going to talk about being picky eaters because Ben is famously a picky eater and I used to be one. So <laughs> it's going to be an interesting conversation. Um, bring your questions, send me your cooking photos. I will feature them on Sunday as well. Um, let me know. Um, we can talk about picky eating. I mean, I am still picky about some things. As, as much as the food that I cook, I am still kind of picky about some things. Um, but friends, uh, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. And I will see you maybe Sunday, Sunday, Sunday evening at 5 p.m. Eastern. Maybe, maybe. Uh, cool. I'll tweet the details about it and you can get to know Ben before he joins me on the show. But have a great evening, everybody. Uh, I will stream again with you soon. Goodbye. See you later. <laughs>